Greetings. Couple minutes and talk to you about mapping outcomes. This is primarily for program chairs and program coordinators. So a little bit about mapping and the basics thereof. Uh, it's important to understand that mapping, uh, there's no particular way that you have to do it. This is a methodology. This is what I've used and it seems to work pretty good. Uh, when we map, what we're trying to do is create that lineage or that linkage from an activity in a course like a paper all the way to a program outcome. And it's important to identify that because when we want to go in and say create an assessment plan, we need to know where we're going to collect, how we're going to collect, and the methodology to do that. So the mapping document is really important and I'll show you one here real briefly. Um, it's, it's ideal to link learning outcomes to program outcomes. Sometimes we'll have learning outcomes in a course that may not link directly, maybe indirectly to a program outcome. Um, and that has to be determined at the campus to, to determine if it's gonna be uh, feasible and functional to do that. Um, it's important also to understand that we have that achievement at different levels. So where 100 and 200 level courses may be gathering that at say introductory and uh, novice levels, you may see that a 300 and 400 level course is gonna go into practicing and mastery to uh, to evaluate those those levels of achievement uh, likewise it's important to understand whether or not you're identifying that an outcome is going to meet uh, in, in, a, in a class of course if the uh, if the outcomes are going to meet an entire program outcome or is it going to capture part of that um, and that's important to consider in how you do your assessment plan. But regardless, that mapping document is going to help you do that and identify that. And primarily, you know, you're doing this to uh, prepare for the next accreditation visit where you can say, here's my plan, here's my map, here's how I collected the data. Is If you follow that, then you're doing what you need to do. Um, so let's talk about the matrices and, and how to compartmentalize that information. So in this example, you can see this is a example, not the example. Uh, it's important to note. You can see the course learning activities in the left-hand side, and that pretty much identifies the assessment activities that I'm going to use in this particular course and how those activities link to or to which LOs those activities will link to. Likewise, in the middle column, you see the actual learning outcomes for that particular course. And what we're doing is identifying which program outcomes those map to. So I can see that lineage all the way across. Uh, and then, therefore, it helps me kind of cherry pick which outcomes I'm going to use in an assessment period. Uh, then I can backtrack back down to which activities then I want to collect the data on. Because let's say, for instance, I'm going to do critical thinking. So critical thinking is number one. So you can see that number one is pretty much in every single uh, learning outcome and in, therefore, a lot of those learning activities. But if I'm going to do, say, somewhat, something like uh, aviation management and operations, then you can see how that is not going to be across every single outcome. So I'm going to cherry pick certain activities that map to that lineage all the way to that particular program outcome 11. Hope this helps. This ties together with the other uh, in this series uh, of instructional videos on assessments.